So the three things that are required for a reaction to occur are that there must be collisions. The orientation of the reactant molecules must be in a way to align properly to break and to form the bonds. And there must be enough energy to provide the activation energy. So what is the activation energy? Is the amount of energy required to break the bonds in our reactant molecules um, in order for them to um, form new bonds, okay? So that's what, um, that's what our, react our activation energy is. So, to give you another idea, let's think about if you, let's say a chemical reaction is you bumping into someone in the hallway and you drop your books on the floor, right? Um, if you're walking slowly and you bump into another person, it's probably not enough energy for you to bump into them and drop your books on the floor, right? However, if you're running down the hall and you bump into someone you're likely to drop your books on the floor because the two of you ran into each other with enough energy. So activation energy, once again, is the amount of energy, is the distance, the potential energy between the reactants and the product, I mean the reactants and the transition state, which is the amount of energy required to break the bonds in our reactant molecules, right? And it is a reg it can measure how fast the reaction occurs. So if I have a low activation energy, then I only have to put in a little bit of energy into the reaction, the reaction will move forward. This is what kind of reaction? This is an endothermic reaction and the um, and the energy of our products is higher than the energy of our reactants. Is this most likely a favored reaction? Not generally favored because it is an endothermic reaction. Um, and so endothermic reactions aren't generally favored because you have to add supply a large amount of energy. Um, will the reaction occur? It can occur but you'll have to continually supply the energy necessary, right? So activation energy is the amount of energy between the reactants and the transition state. The less the activation energy, the faster the rate of a reaction. So what does what is the actual rate of the reaction? So the rate is measured by determining the amount of reactant that's used up over a period of time or you can take a look at the amount of product formed over a certain period of time. So it's gonna be the change in concentration of the reactant and product per change in time. So notice that in the first 10 minutes of this reaction, we have mainly reactant particles and very few um, um, product particles. And as a matter of fact, at time zero, we have zero product and 40 molecules. As time goes on, we lose reactant molecules as product molecules form. So the rate, the forward rate is the rate, is the disappearance of A over time or the appearance of B, our product, over time. And the initial rate is generally going to be swift it's going to be steep, and then it starts to level off at a certain point. And we'll talk about what that leveling off point is um, later on in the lecture. So the lower the activation energy, the higher the number of productive collisions and the faster the reaction. Right? So if I have to if I don't have to put in too much energy into a reaction, then I'm going to have more productive collisions um, with lower activation energy. The higher the activation energy, the lower the number of productive collisions and the slower reaction. So 
although a reaction is slow, it doesn't mean that it's not going to occur. It doesn't mean that it's not spontaneous. It just means that it's slow. If you think about leaving your bicycle outside in the elements, it's going to rust over time. It's going to rust. Now, the addition of water will increase the speed in which the reaction occurs. Why? Hmm. Things will rust over time. However, they rust faster in the presence of water because it's the reaction between the iron and, and steel and the oxygen in the air. And we'll come back to what water is in this whole process um, in a minute. So let's do some practice. Let's take a look at the energy diagram below. And this is our free energy diagram. Delta G is on our y-axis. Is this going to be fast or slow? Well, it's going to be a fast reaction because the activation energy is low. Remember, the activation energy is um, difference between our reactants and our products. So we have a fast reaction for this um, example. 